Daddy eats sloth. Daddy eats sloth. Daddy eats sloth. Munch, munch, munch. Hello and welcome to Daddy A Slash, where we discuss the challenges of being a man in modern society and what the hell that even means. And one of the challenges of technology at the moment and putting uh, wallpapers up on Zoom. Anyway, I'm Kane and joining me this evening are Ryan and Maddie. Firstly, gents, what's new? Evening, lads. How are we all tonight? Good. You made a cake. I did make a cake. Cake two out of three. So it was a uh, little Sammy's second birthday yesterday. So I made him a number two cake. Dairy free. Um, turned out all right. Mm. Did, what what colour was the icing in the end? Because it was it was in the shape of a two. Well, you sent three photos to us both, and it's the shape of a two, which I thought was impressive, but apparently just stencil. <laughs> it was harder than it looked. Um, it it was an orange cake in the end with some um, orange sprinkles and yellow sprinkles. That was the uh, the brief. Now, how, how much waste did John a cake? Because it, it was shaped like a number two. Like, do you need not two massive squares of cake and then stencil out the remaining cake? And what do you do with the spare cake? Have you cake been reading Woman's waste. Weekly Cake Book too, Kane? No, no. <laughs> you are <laughs> what imagine, what, correct there. <laughs> what happens to the cake wastage? Uh, no wastage in this house. I just um, eat the the leftover bits as I as I make the cake. So any leftover icing, we just scrape onto the um, the crumbs or the offcuts, and yeah. Nothing that's, wasted with me. That's a good result. And you've been baking as well, Ryan. Baking, you, you, you lost your baking virginity this week. I did. Sunday last week. Uh, I hope you used lots of banana butter. cake. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> um, no, it came out really well. It, uh, it was gone within two to three days. Um, but yeah, I started at the nothing as extravagant and good as Maddie's, but I, I was quite proud of it, to be honest. Oh, I, I, I liked it. It looked good. It looked crispy on the outside and, and, and moist on the inside. And moist while it is a, a, it a, you know, a word which sounds you know, awful, um, is a good way of describing a good cake. Yes, it was actually very, um, had that right balance. So I was pretty happy with it. Excellent, excellent. Well, not much has been going on here. We had my birthday celebration down here today for turning 41. My actual birthday is on Tuesday, but uh, we had it on the Sunday just because it's just easier. If you spread it out over a couple of days, our little fella just goes wild for shit. So he was up at like quarter to six this morning and you know, he was excited for my birthday, even though I didn't give two hoots about it. So, But we had that today, which was nice. He, he behaved himself on the whole. We you know, had some cake and some... Uh, hot dogs and yeah, pizza for dinner and some wine because I could. Happy days. That's mm. actually not a bad, not a bad Come little on. pizza wine. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and then it's the little so, things these days. It is the little things these days. I was angling for a bath, but of course, Daddy Eats Last is a priority. But before Daddy Eats Last, I actually sat down and I've been watching a show. We've got Stan recently. We're on a, a Stan trial. We picked up a show based on a book called Normal People and you know, my better half said, oh, yeah, I've heard some, you know, Mamma Mia and that blah, 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 talking about this, you know, this book and there's a TV show made out of it. Out of it. And it's on the stand. Oh, we should watch it. And so far, so good. I've got to say, like, it's, it's based in Ireland and it follows basically yeah. like sort of a, a relationship between Connell and Marianne, uh, two Irish um, youngsters in their sort of teens. I've got to say, I, so far, we're about eight episodes into series one. And I'm, no doubt the book is better because the book is always better than the movie or always better than the series. But so far, it's just been a lot of talking and fucking. So for me, it's five stars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Do they have thick Irish accents? They do. Some bits are legitimately going, oh, I'm not sure what they said there. Yeah, I, over here, I work with some people. Um, I work with people all over the UK in my role here. And the further north they go, like those in Manchester, I'm like, oh, you guys are a bit hard to understand. Those in Ireland are on the phone, no chance. We, <laughs> we talk and it's just like, we will move this to Microsoft Teams messaging because they can't <laughs> understand my accent and I've got no chance of this. I, it's, it's so that, yeah, in the UK, the accents get worse the further north you go. In Australia, the beer gets worse the further north you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'll agree, I'll agree with Carlton, Tui's, Forex, you know, <laughs> London, Manchester, Ireland. 
Good analogy. But, but anyway, the normal people, it's basically these two people you're talking and fucking. And um, what came up was the guy in it, Connell, was he got he lost his job. And that way, he, they were at college in Dublin and he couldn't pay his rent. And this girl that he was in a relationship at this point, the, the same person who's been subject to the, the, the fucking, um, he wouldn't ask. He wouldn't ask for help. Like, all he had to say to her was, oh, listen, and he was talking about, uh, I'm going to ask her if I can stay there. And people saying, you should ask if she, you can stay with this girl for a couple of months while you got a new job. And he didn't ask and they ended up breaking up. So I thought tonight would be a really good topic about um, asking, asking for help. Cause guys, guys aren't really good at that. And just asking for things. Cause again, it's not something that guys are, are great at proactively asking for assistance on things. Do you, do you find that? Is it, is, is, do you find it hard to ask for help or hard to just ask for, for anything from somebody? Uh, yeah, very much resonate with that. I find it very easy to give help. Mm. Very difficult to ask for help. How about you, Maddie? Yeah, I, like I'll, I'll agree with what Ryan said there. Um, when, when this topic came through this afternoon, I, I was thinking to myself, um, in, in the areas of my life in, in where I give help and, and willingly receive, willingly, willingly receive help. Um, and I sort of broke it down and it, the one thing that sort of resonated across all the different aspects of my life was it sort of relates to how much knowledge I have on the topic I'm asking for help about. Like if, if I know nothing about it at all and I haven't dipped my toe in, in at, 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 at all, I'll definitely be asking for help um, without any hesitation. But if I have some sort of knowledge or prior sort of um, dealings with, with, with it, I'll, I might hesitate to ask and look elsewhere for an answer just out of maybe, maybe that's to do with just maybe a bit of pride perhaps, or wanting to not look, um, you know, not smart, on, not smart on the topic or something like that. But yeah, it, does it come back to that? Is it like, does it come, is it as simple as saying it's kind of an ego thing? Like we, and I, and I don't ask for help for stuff, which I, I should ask for stuff, help, help areas I should ask for help in. Like, is, does this come back to like, you know, if I ask for help that, I just come across as you know, not being good enough. I, th I think so. Yeah. And, but I've, over the years I've gotten a lot better and realized that that's probably not exactly how I'm coming across. That's probably mm. all just perceived in my own mind, but um, definitely with work um, I've learned that it's better to ask for help. Whereas I probably didn't in, in the past when I was a little bit younger, but knowing that, you know, it's, it's probably more time consuming not to ask for help and work at the answer rather than just go directly to someone who, has the answer for you or can put you on the right path yeah and we're going through that at the moment with the little fella where he doesn't want help on anything because he's you know wanting to be more independent like today he wanted to light the candles on the cake first thing he said when he woke up is oh, i'm gonna light the candles on your cake for you to blow and i'm like i mate, i got nothing to do with the cake it's my birthday i don't let light my own candles anyway so you go talk to mum. um but effectively like he's going through that phase now where he wants to do a lot more stuff and i'm trying to say to him oh listen buddy it's okay to ask for help if you don't know how to do something or you can't do something or you know you, you need you need some assistance on something it's perfectly okay to do that where i don't think i don't really remember anyone saying that to me when i was younger it wasn't like oh yeah just ask for help if you're struggling with something no, I, I can't remember. Well, help was always there, I, I'm assuming, um, especially with, with my parents. Um, but it was never really drummed home that it's okay to ask for help. Yeah, if you, if you ask for help, they'd always be there. My parents are much the same. If you said, oh, listen, I need help with this, you'd get help. But it wasn't like, it wasn't a, yeah, it, there was never any inquiry. Do you, you, do you need any help with this, buddy? Do you need to talk about anything? Like it was literally just, we're here if you need us but it was more of a broad thing instead of, yeah, you know, it's okay to ask us for help whenever you want it. Even if it's just to, you know, tie shoelaces because you, you know, you can't reach them. <laughs> hey, Ryan, yeah, you're a pretty, you know, you're pretty, you're pretty competent in everything you've, you've ever done as far as I can, I can tell. Like I, I, I know I can't <laughs> swim hand on my heart. Like I've, I've tried to seek help in swimming and I still can't swim. It's just not something I can do, but like you, you're very competent in everything I've seen you do and you seem very confident in a lot of the stuff that, that you do and you do it really well. Um, is, do you think it's a, like an ego thing not to ask for help? Well, I don't know. I don't agree with that, but I'll, I'll take it. Um, thanks for that. That sounds good. But a um, 100% an, an ego thing. Um, I think 
I think I, it's also a prove to yourself thing mm. um, that you that you can do it. Um, and also because, and it's probably one of the things that drew me towards healthcare is I like being the one to help others. So it's it's really like finding it difficult to be on the reverse end of that, but on the actual helping of others, that's that's really good. I I agree with Maddie though in that if there's shit that I just have no idea about or no clue, I'm probably very quick to ask for help because I literally would just point and go, I got no freaking idea what I'm doing here. Can can I have some help? But if I if I do know something or even if I'm perceived to know something from other people, um, I would find it very, very challenging. And I think it's probably, yeah, there's probably an ego thing. There's probably also, I, I do think there's a big cultural thing. Um, I think there's a big cultural thing around just growing up that way and, and growing up of you work it out yourself and you stand on your own two feet. Yeah. Yep. No, I agree with that. It's funny. I've got, I've got a, probably a, a work situation where I'm looking at uh, just shaking up some of the stuff we do in the technology space. And I know a guy pretty well, like I wouldn't, you know, I, I know him well enough that I could call him up and just go, Hey, listen, can you help me with this? And he'd help me and he probably wouldn't charge me. But I, like you're saying, it, it's, it, I feel like it's something I should know and should be able to work out myself. And I'm probably spending too much time trying to work it out myself instead of just going to this guy and going, Hey, what should I do? And he'd go in an hour, boom, 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 and it's done. So it's it's a sort of stubbornness, like, you know, I should be able to work it out because I know that I can if I spend enough time. But sometimes you go, well, fuck spending another 40 hours on it. I can ask somebody and they can tell me the answer in an hour. Or they can help me in yeah. you know, help me in half a, a fraction of the time. I think I think it's all so you know, how much of whatever it is you are asking for help you associate with your identity. Mm. Like if I don't associate much of my identity with something and I find myself in the exact same situation as you where I go, yeah, I'm not really, um, you know, a numbers person or whatever it happens to be. I'll, you know, ask, ask you or, or somebody else straight away without, without sort of hesitation. But if it's something that you associate a part of your identity with, I find it much harder. Like if it was like a sporting or a athletic or a, physical thing um yeah i think i'll find it much harder which is interesting because i'm actually thinking of um as we're having some restrictions ease over here and can't go to the gym and all that kind of thing bringing on board a personal trainer and that would be a really i would find that quite hard just from a from a help kind of thing um so i think it, it, it is depending on what you associate your identity with and, and if you don't then I think it's much easier to ask for help but yeah and I, I think one of the things is I read this phenomenal book this year called Ego is the Enemy and it, mm. it outlines a lot of things um, and I'm constantly trying to remind myself of that because I do think a heap of it comes down to ego stubbornness probably just testosterone a bit as well to, to, to an extent in terms of asking for help but also one of the things that it said was or one of the things that I read around this area is think of how much joy you get from helping others and think if you're not asking for help you can actually like you you're doing a disservice from them being able to pass on that joy to you um, oh, I like it. I like how you, the, the, the solution to, the solution to the ego thing is bringing it back to your own ego by making you feel, exactly. <laughs> make yourself feel better. Exactly. Because <laughs> you've make made somebody else feel better. better by, by giving them the gift of helping you. <laughs> that's fantastic. Um, but look, whatever, that, that's kind of a way that I'm using to tackle asking for help uh, a little bit more. And I'm, I'm still shit out at it. But um, yeah, I suppose whatever works for you and if bringing it back to my own ego helps me, then I'll probably do that. What about just, what about just asking for anything? Like, you know, as opposed to asking for help on something, just asking for, you know, asking for anything. Like, is this, there's probably a difference between asking for help. I actually really need help with something and just asking, I don't know, just asking offhanded. I can, I don't know. Can you pick up the kids or something in Maddie's case? I don't know. Like I even don't do much of that a lot of the time. It's weird. 
I don't, I don't either. Like if, if we're in a bit of a bind or, or we need something, it'll generally, if we try and work it out ourselves or, or Kim's, Kim's a bit better. She, she's happy to ask people, but I just sort of, yeah, think, well, I'm, selfishly, I, I'm in this situation, so maybe I can work it out myself, but more than happy to offer my services to people. In that mm. well, that was actually, that was actually something which, again, this is linked back to normal people, which I can plug on here, RST TV show about, you know, people fucking and talking. Um, it is, it was, it's, uh, this guy didn't know how to ask for anything. And then, the girl wanted to help, but he, cause he didn't ask that, you know, they ended up breaking up over it because, you know, there was a lack of communication there. So even just asking your partner for stuff, I, I guess is sometimes re- seems harder than it really needs to be. Like, an, mm-hmm. do you, are your partners better at asking you for stuff than you are for them? But Maddie, you gave an example there where, you know, Kim's probably, you know, will ask you to do stuff much more than you'll ask her. What about you, Ryan? Good question. Um, I think going back to the first one in terms of just asking for help generally, I think for me it falls into two categories. Is there a financial ramification to it on the person I'm asking for help or to mm-hmm. myself? Or is there a non-financial? Um, and I would say if it's a non-financial thing, I'm probably pretty okay to ask for help. Like, you know, can you give me a hand moving house or help me out in this kind of thing? Um, if there's a financial ramification to that person, even though they're probably more than happy to do so, um, I would be like probably needing to be bailed out of jail before I'd go down that path um, and actually ask for help. So I think that's where I've found it gets tricky for, for me to just ask for help um, and also just how well you, you know the person. But I mean, in terms of partner, I think... I think TK is better at calling out that we need help. Um, however, I don't know that she's better at asking for help from me. I think I actually probably ask for help from her more than she asks for help from me um, because she is a much calmer and much more uh, smarter and logical person than I am. So usually provides a lot more help than I can provide the other way around. Because it's usually when I'm very frustrated with something. Oh, mate, if you ever need somebody to bail you out, bail you, out you can call me. But you have to tell me why I'm bailing you out. That's fair. That's fair. That's it. It is. I think it's something which is uni- almost universal across amongst men. But just the inability to ask for anything which yeah, is important, especially important stuff, like asking for help, like, you know, asking for somebody to listen to this and not feeling okay. Like you know, people going through a depressive or almost suicidal tendencies that they, they almost never ask about those sort of things. Um, and I know in the next couple of weeks, we're going to have, you know, a couple of guests on or a guest on who's been through some tough times and he's gone through the process of asking for help. So I'm really looking forward to learning a little bit more from, from him on, you know, how much courage it took to actually ask, ask for help in a really difficult time. Yeah, and just going back to Kane to what you said about what you were talking to your little fella about, we've really got, as parents and Ryan, future parents, we've got the power now, I guess, to change the perception of, of guys mm. asking for help. So hammer home to our kids that it is okay and um, don't because be ashamed. Because it, it used to be the stiff upper lip, like I just, you know, yeah. just suck it up and get on with it, son. Like, and, you know, I, I kind of was, a, and Maddie, you'd be much the same, and Ryan, you're probably in the same boat. We're that bridging generation between the, you know, just keep it all inside and just bottle it up and, you know, just go to the pub and have 100 beers on a Friday night and she'll be right, mate, <laughs> um, to like the complete opposite. And, you know, the complete opposite is obviously a healthier way of going about things where you're sharing your vulnerabilities and you're sharing your problems and you're talking about stuff and you're asking for help when you need it instead of just you know she'll be right and then just being a miserable fuck and i think it's that that fine line of getting that level of emotional intelligence to know when do i need to ask for help in this situation and when is this one of those situations that is just generally resilience building Mm. and it's okay it's just challenging but it's not it's challenging for a growth and a stretch opportunity. It's not necessarily needing to ask for help, but I just need to be aware that it could flip over to that, that cliff edge. Um, And, and having that awareness to, to know 
you know, when, when and when not. And I think, like, I like what you guys just both said there because I think from a cultural thing, going back to that thing with, you know, guys asking for help, for, for me it's certainly seen as, like, admitting defeat at times, like, depending on what it is, obviously. We're talking quite broadly here. But if I think of big things, if I really ask for help and say, look, I'm, I'm completely flat out here, um, of ideas and solutions and I'm in the hole with, I don't know whether it's a business thing or a personal thing or whatever, I need some help here. It's like I've expired all my resources and I've been defeated by this and I need a hand up. But it's, and, and that's, uh, I say that in that that's a, it's a cultural thing and that's not the right cultural thing that it should be, but that's just, just what it is. So it's seen as a bit of a, bit of a, um, an embarrassing thing or a bit of a failure but what you said came before is that it sh- we, sh- we should flip that and be like no it's actually the opposite it's the person that is courageous to ask for help it's the person that is showing courage and vulnerability that um, should be you know a- applauded and, and that is a greater sign of success than stiff upper lifting it and trying to plow through and keep hitting a brick wall yeah and i think that cultural shift that'll be challenging yeah and i think with everything which is going on in the world at the moment the world's a crazy place like any way that people can show some courage and vulnerability to move the human race forward and you know make everything more inclusive because at the moment everything is really divisive and shit i've been Mm. swearing like this rs tv show had a lot to answer for (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> any way we can yeah, show some vulnerability and you know, actually change the culture, I think is a really important way forward for everyone. I think so. I think we've, we've experienced a bit having moved over like, and it's been wonderful that I've had so many people at work and back home or whatnot call out and go moved over for this great international experience only to get put in a lockdown. And you know, we, we've had some, some cards not go our way, I guess, if you, if you think about it that way. Um, but still standing completely fine. But so many people have been like, oh, if, you know, this happened, I'd, I'd be upset or do you need any help or whatever? And I've been very walls up against it. I've been like, no, nah, we made the decision to come here, dug ourselves this hole, regardless, you know, can't control the pandemic, trying to do it with an optimistic view. But Probably about a week ago, we did sort of at least ask for help with each other about this challenging time and go, okay, we need to change the scenario. What can we control? What can we do to make this positive? Otherwise, we could be heading down some bad mental health pathways. Um, And just calling that out and asking for help and, you know, using a few of the... um, mental health resources that that are available for work has been very challenging, but has been very good. Um, And yeah, just making some decisions about going and actually working overseas in in a different place and changing our environment to acknowledge that it will make us feel better um, has been, I think, empowering, but it's very difficult to, to get yourself to that point to be like you know what all these people are telling me that i I should be needing some help in this shitty situation and i'm telling them no um it's 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 an interesting it was an interesting reflection well you are off you're off uh next week you won't be on daddy's last because you will be in a foreign jurisdiction you'll be our portuguese correspondent next week Ah. i will I, uh, that was one of the decisions that we, we said we've got to change the, the situation, change the scenario. Um, Does TK know that Portugal's big, big, big in seafood? She, she does not know that it's big, big, big in seafood. I think she's aware that I'm going to be having some good seafood there, but she maybe didn't know that it was that, that big. The national, um, dish is, the national dish is codfish. <laughs> Ronaldo, uh, the famous soccer player, eats it all the time. So codfish is their national dish and bordering on an obsession. So. Get some oh, cold I'm looking on your forward to a heap of seafood there. Um, but yeah, we the the we can fly in there, and we have the opportunity with with my work to be able to like I won't be going back to the office, maybe not for the year. So I'm like fortunate and and very lucky to be able to work from wherever. So 
yeah, we decided we're going to be a bit proactive and go and base ourselves there for a while. That um, is fantastic. Portugal, yeah. I've always really liked the idea of Portugal, never having been. I've been to Spain, but yeah, I always loved the idea of Portugal because it was like, you know, Spanish, but I just thought it was cooler. So kudos to you. <laughs> I'm not sure what the, so, yeah. uh, the Spanish or Portuguese word for kudos is, but that in your general direction. Thank you. Uh, definitely excited about it though. Well, I think that about wraps it up for this week on Daddy Eats Last. Remember to subscribe to Daddy Eats Last on iTunes if you haven't already. And while you're there, please leave a review. Tell your mates about the podcast, especially if they are guys. Most of all, thanks for listening and do ask for help if you need it. We'll be back next week for another episode. I should I or should I say serving? Yeah, maybe of codfish if you're in Portugal. Of Daddy Eats Last. How's that for a dad joke? Catch you next week. Bye bye. Bye bye.